Timers ready. Guns on the rail. Shooters ready. Oh, it's great. It's the best time I've ever had. Carnival atmosphere. It's great. Can't compare it. Really. Thank you. I'll be here every year. Well, it started back, uh, actually, it was in a motel room about 12 years ago in Reno, in a hotel in Reno. I think it was Harrah's or one of them. And it was Mason Williams, the famous gun writer, and Alex Jason, the famous movie maker, and myself. And we were just discussing the various possibilities of uh, what kind of a, a pin shoot, other than the obvious paper target punching. We could have some kind of reaction target, some kind of steel plates that would fall down. And that was, that was seriously considered, steel plates would fall down, or wooden planks that would fall down, such that uh, you would need a large caliber, high energy bullet, the same bullet that would be sufficient to uh, help you survive a gunfight in a dark alley, would be also what you would need to win this contest. Bowling pins, rather than steel targets, which would simply flop over every time you hit them, the bowling pins will, as you saw here in this movie, spin out, go every which way. Sometimes knock other pins over. You fire the first shot, and suddenly everybody looks like all the pins are running for cover. That happens occasionally in a gunfight. And the more and more uh, that this has gone on, the more and more realistic in many ways that it seems. Uh, very realistic things. In, in many cases, we've seen guys hit pins three, four, five times before they clear it off the table. And yet, in some rare occasions, we've seen guys fire one shot and clear two or three pins off. And occasionally that happens in a gunfight. You fire one shot, the one bad guy drops dead, and the other guys go, oh my god, don't shoot me. So that can happen. Don't count on it, but, but it could happen. If you ever look at the uh, old official Colt FBI target, the silhouette of a man standing there, you know, his hand on his hip, well, look at the kill zone of that. It looks like a great big bowling pin. And the kill zone of a human being is actually very, very similar to a, the shape of a bowling pin the wide part of the head and then the narrow part of the neck and a very wide part of the body. So it's uh, just a happy accident that it works out. Hey, Mike, you won last year. Yes. The time of, what was the time? 18-6. 18-6. What are you going to do this year? Let's go up and watch the sights and um, let the sights dictate the string. If the uh, sights line up and working the trigger good, it'll hopefully be okay. an 18-6 run. On the line, you can load them up. You can't force bowling pin shooting. It's strictly letting the sights dictate what's going on. Well, why can you shoot faster than most people? Don't. A lot of practice and working on speed shooting and a good solid stance. Um, Staying locked up behind the gun, get a good foundation behind it. And um, Money talks. Yeah. being probably blessed with uh, good hand-eye coordination and um, muscle reflexes. And are you nervous before you go on? Not really. I get a little bit of adrenaline rush, but uh, as far as getting the knees shaking, no. What do you tell yourself when you get to the line? I try to go up, think about what I'm going to do. Uh, watch the sights. More guys want to sign up for Master Blaster shoot off. And, you don't have um, to be a Master Blaster. I lower the gun down the rail, just say completely forget about everything. Just try to be and, uh, nice and smooth. Actually, we had, uh,
Well, this is a really uh, unusual shooting uh, competition event, isn't it? It's an un unusual shooting competition, yes. I don't know of any other matches that are held quite in this informal a manner, uh, yet with still some very good and strong safety rules. Uh, it's a very good match, a very good place where people can come and shoot and uh, have a good relaxing time. Most other competition, you'll find a lot of tension in the air. At this one, there's everything to relieve the tension. What's the difference between a, a joke and a psychic? Uh, a joke is where you get something funny. Foster and Roy! Guys. <laughs> and the, you see a lot of family people out here, which uh, really uh, I support. I think uh, shooting is a, both a man and uh, wife affair, and the whole family can have it. And Richard's got some playgrounds here for the kids. He's got a little bit for everybody. Uh, got prizes for the ladies. I think it uh, really speaks well of him and his thoughtfulness in the organization. Oh, hi. It's good to be the king. See <laughs> uh, you later, girls. <laughs> Anyway, we've got to explain the uh, pin set here. This is a basic uh, five pin set. We've got white dots here, where uh, the girls can quickly and easily put the pins in the correct spot for the guys to shoot them. Uh, these pins are, the center line of them is uh, three feet from the back edge of the table. So uh, the whole basic idea of this contest is, is that you do not have to have super special equipment. No massive bull barrel, bullseye guns or anything like that. An MP can jump out of his Jeep with a 45 in his hand. Plain vanilla, fixed sights, hardball ammo, hit that pin, and that's gone. Shooters, ready? Hit it, it's gone. If you miss it, it isn't. If you nick it on the edge, it starts rolling. Then you got trouble. Hit it over here, it goes, yeah, you got trouble. You knock pins over. So, you want to hit the white part. This is the basic two-man team event set. We've got 10 pins. Uh, they're all set here on these red dots. They're only two and a half feet from the back edge. There's nothing uh, scientific about that. The main thing is we didn't want to confuse the red dots with the white dots. For the uh, revolver event, two revolver events, we just simply shoot these, eight pins. And the revolver events, a man has a six-shot revolver, six shots only. I don't, these guys are amazing. They'll build eight, nine, ten shot revolvers if you give them a chance, but we said six shot revolver only, and they have to, of course, speed load. It is possible, it has been done, where a guy would clear these eight pins, believe it or not, with six shots. Bill Wilson did it uh, last year. He hit the first five, his sixth shot hit this pin, and it just rolled over like that, and they all very slowly fell off, just about like that. Bill Wilson was down here working with a speed loader, he comes up, <gasps> and they're all gone. <laughs> he, goes, he turns and looks at me, Real accusing, like I pulled something on him with, with a silent 22 or something. And I said, no, Bill, looks like you won. And he did. Uh, luck the draw. Back here, you have the uh, nine pin set. This is for the, basically a nine millimeter, which uh, nine millimeter is becoming more and more popular, rightly or wrongly, with American police and military. In the nine millimeter event, all you have to do is knock the pins one foot. That's about all nine millimeter is good for. A nine millimeter will not knock a pin dependably two and a half or three feet back. We, once in a while, we get some guy come up here with a 38 Super Auto with uh, 130 or even 140 grain bullets and try to do it. it doesn't work. Uh, they, for some reason, they just don't have the energy. Everybody's ready. Start on the rail. Shooters ready. Yeah, Chris has four good times, one bad time. A three good times, one bad time. Now, two five, two five, eight eleven. Ready to roll, two five, eight eleven. Okay, timers, ready? Guns on the rail. Shooters, ready? Two and a half, three and a half, two and a half, three Three, six, nine, twelve. Uh, all set, then. Three, six, nine, twelve. Timers ready. Guns on the rail. 
shoes ready. One of my favorite jokes that my uh, Jewish hot dog man told me, uh, 80 year old Jewish man goes in this house of ill repute and uh, says, I want the best girl what you got. And the madam says, well, look at Gramps, I'm sorry, you just can't handle it here. Uh, he says, I give you a thousand dollars. She says, all right, give you the best girl. He said that there's a new Ethiopian cabbage patch now. Okay. Says, Ooh, don't go fly, she stick all over. <laughs> Ooh. All set to go then. One, four, seven, ten. Hammers ready. Guns on the rail. Shooters ready. Okay, slide on over. Two, five, eight, eleven. on the rail. Shooters ready. Oh, fast time there, table nine. What do you have, girls? A 4.2 there, table nine. Very good. Can I talk to you a minute? Yeah. How, how, how'd you do? Not real well. What happened? Didn't watch the front side. You had some good times. It's good. And you had some couple of slow times. A couple of bad ones, too. <laughs> but you know why you did badly when you did badly? No concentration. Front, it's front side? Yeah. That's really what it is. How do you like shooting pins? Love it. Yeah. Love it. What do you think of this match compared to a lot of other matches? Love it. It's one of the better. Yeah. What do you like about it? Everything. Everything. Rises, food, good time. Excellent. Right. I'm into my house of ill repute. <laughs> Now, what you, we got a couple of guns, a couple of rounds of ammo in there. Well, we just came from Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your normal load? We were going downtown, but we made a left turn. We thought we'd come up north. What the heck? I don't care about 2,000 pounds of ammunition in the back. 2,000 pounds? I got 110 pounds of air in my air. And the back end's going. We've got Hands in the front seat sort of bounce a little because you can't steer. <laughs> Hot climate, huh? Summer camping gear for Detroit. What's in there? What's in there? More ammo, two, three. <laughs> ready. And that's what I call it, prepared. More ammo. <laughs> Well, you killed the grass. Right. There's no one alive laying on the lawn. <laughs> Guns on the rail. Shooters ready. Okay, shuffle on over to 25811. And we'll do it again. Come on in. We're ready to go. 
Timer's ready. Guns on the rail. Shooter's ready. Six, nine, and twelve. One more time. Bruce Gray. Bruce, Bruce Gray. Gunsmith extraordinaire. Where'd he go? Okay. Last time. Let's make it good. One more time. Timer's ready. Guns on the rail. Shooters ready. Okay, slides back, so is open. Do Says I, I may not be perfect, but parts of me are perfect. Oh my goodness. I may not be perfect. This, is, this must be how it must be to be a, a nightclub act in uh, downtown Beirut, you know? <laughs> It says, I may not be perfect, but parts of me are excellent. And the question is, what parts, Audrey? <laughs> Her brain, okay. Pirates ready. Guns on the rail. Shooters ready. Goes up there with the girl, and he says, takes his clothes off, and the girl looks at him, and there's just, you know, nothing more to little nub there. She says, look, uh, Gramps here, great Gramps, whatever. I, I've had a lot of experience with a lot of guys, and I've done a lot of things, but uh, I just don't think I can do anything for you. You're just too old for me. He says, not you should not to worry. You should not worry. I have gotten it trained. I've gotten it trained. Every time I am snapping my fingers, it is growing an inch. Okay, grasp the weapons. Timers ready. Guns on the rail. Shooters ready. How long have you been doing this, Priscilla? How many years? Five years. Five years. You gonna come next year? Hopefully. <laughs> Timers ready. Guns on the rail. Shooters ready. Joke here a couple years ago. We said we got here a second chance. We got an event for practically everything. We got an event for rifles, shotguns, uh, two man teams, three man teams, revolver events for short barrel, long barrel revolvers. We got mixed doubles events for men and women, women's events. We got an event, folks, for practically everything except premature ejaculation. <laughs> but I'll give you a little secret. I said back in 83, that's coming quickly. And sure enough, in 1984, we had this event we started. We called it the premature ejaculation event. When you see it fired, you kind of realize why that name kind of fits. Take your time now. Get down to the bottom of the trigger. Targets. Okay, on this particular year, there's there's four moving targets. The perfect score can be reached by hitting two of the targets six times, two of the targets eight times, and then holding back two rounds for two bowling pins, which get added into the score as bonus points. Any room here, Johnny? And then the whole thing is multiplied together so that we have a final score of somewhere close to 74,000 points would be the perfect score. Mm -hmm. How big is the computer that does all this? Pocket-sized cow. Oh, is that right? It <laughs> sounds very complicated. No, it's, it's not bad. Well, how can you possibly remember how many shots you got on each target? Well, what the, <clears throat> the purpose of the thing for the fellows that shoot it is to uh, to get a burst control pattern. 
They don't actually, they can't count the shots, of course, but they can get a feel for burst control. into business selling cardboard bowling pin targets. How do they sell? Uh, they've been going very well. I've sold about 2,000 of them this week. 2,000? How much do they cost? Uh, $20 for 100 targets. Rocks. And how much are the rocks? A dime. Where do you get them from? Ground. How many have you sold today? I don't know because I didn't count them. Well, have you made a lot of money? Yes, five dollars. Selling rocks? Yes. And what do you want to be when you grow up? An electrical engineer. Don't you think you should get into sales? I think you're a good salesman. You sell things well. Yes. What's your name? Blaze Brody Schatzel. <laughs> and how old are you? Five and three quarters. Five and three, which three quarters? Three quarters of a year. Very good. Show me one of your most expensive rocks. They're all the same. Oh, well, which, ro which rocks do people like best? Which type? Most of, most of the red ones and the brown ones. Which ones do you like best? Now, are you going to give all this money to Richard Davis? My the rocks were found outside of that, and, and I and I don't know, and I positively don't know who got them. But don't you think you should share this money with Richard Davis? I will, but but I have. A lot. And do you know something? What? You know that it would be extra hard for, <laughs> for me to end up for, for getting. It would be extra hard to find more rocks. And you're the only guy who really sets up a gunsmithing shop here. You bring everything. Everything but the Bridgeport end mill. <laughs> and a clean floor. I got dust everywhere. <laughs> and what's the most common uh, repair you do out here, or job you do out here? Probably failures to feed. Uh, and 90% of that can be attributed to bad magazines or bad ammo or improper lubrication. So when someone brings in a gun that's not feeding well, what do you do? You just oil it and charge them $50 and send them home? No, 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 no. <laughs> I do take it apart and check the uh, feed throat on the barrel and the feed throat in the frame and examine their magazines, ask to see their ammunition, find out what way to recoil spring they're using, uh, you know, go through the basic things that you look for, uh, bad extractors, rough burrs, uh, you know, any little thing that can stop them. Well, this is sort of uh, counseling, isn't it? Like shooting a counselor? Yeah, more, more than not, yes, that's true, that's true.
BCBC -BC on the back range. This is the shotgun range. Now, this was originally called the BCBC because -BC it stood for Bonsai Charge Bang and Clang. In the original uh, days of when this was started, you had to go out and set up your own targets down here. You had to run down, pick up each steel target, and prop it up on a table. Well, that got a little too strenuous for most people, so we changed it to pop-up targets. These were pulled up by cable. Now, the competitor must start right here at this bench with a shotgun, a pump or auto shotgun, with five rounds loaded, no more than five rounds. When the whistle starts or the beeper starts, he can load as many rounds as he wants, or he can start shooting. First thing you do is you shoot down these seven targets, the far ones out there with the, with the girls painting the targets, and the, the close three, any order. You can shoot close or you can shoot far first, doesn't matter. Once those are moved, knocked down, then you can move. We move down to the next table. Generally, the guys running along here, we make them have their finger out of the trigger guard to keep it safe. We get down here with the shotgun. He must take out those three steel targets that are up there. Then he puts his shotgun down. He picks up this skeet gun. Now, this is a double-barreled skeet gun, which, has, uh, which only will fire one shot. That's all, that's all you get here. You pick this up. You yell, pull, and Gary over there will pull the thrower, shooting a skeet into the air. The skeet goes up in the air. If you get that with one shot and one shot only, you get 10 seconds off your time. That's a hell of an advantage. You can't win without getting the skeet. Then you put the skeet gun down. And you move on to the next table in an, as fast as you can. From here, you pick up a hand grenade. Give me a hand grenade, please, Amy. One of these are heavy steel practice grenades. They're quite heavy. It takes a lot to throw them. Thank you. This is one of the lighter ones we have. You throw this hand grenade down there at the barrel. Now, if you hit the outside, the wood portion, you get five seconds off your time. If you get it into the barrel, that's 10 seconds. So having thrown the grenade, you then Pick up your handgun, which is laying here. You've already had your handgun placed on this mat, loaded. You pick up your handgun, shoot the three steel white bowling pins there, and then the stop plate. And the stop plate is what stops the electronic timer, and that gives you your time. So you have a possible 20 seconds off your total time. You get 10 seconds off with the skeet, and 10 seconds off if you get the grenade into the barrel. It's very hard to do. Uh, but a lot of people hit the wood for five seconds. You really don't have much of a chance of winning if you don't get at least five seconds off on the grenade. Uh, that's the BCBC, at least the way we have it this year. Next year, we may have something newer, but the basic BC will remain. Hey, Gene, uh, you won this thing last year. What are you going to do this year? Well, that's why I'm here. I'm here trying to do it again. What's uh, your best time so far? Pardon me? I think it's around 21.3. I'm in third right now, and I got a few more runs. What's your strategy? <laughs> There's not too much strategy here, you know, you just have to, you got to get the long tanks and get the grenade. The grenade's the key to this game. And why can you throw that grenade so well? Pardon me? Why can you throw that grenade so well? Well, I don't know, I've thrown a lot of baseballs, I guess maybe that helps. What kind of equipment are you using? I'm using a Browning A5 with a 10-shot magazine extension. And what kind of compensator is that? That's really not a compensator. It's like a, it's like a muzzle suppressor. Uh, it helps divert some of the gas up in the air so the gun doesn't recoil up as, as much as uh, it would without it. What do you do on your trigger now? Do you slap that trigger? Uh, at times, yeah, you have to slap the trigger. If you, gotta, if you wanna go real fast, if you wanna get sub 20 second times, you have to slap, you, you know, there's gonna be times when you're gonna slap the trigger, no doubt. You get a good sight picture each time? Yeah, just every single time. Well, good luck, Gene. Thanks a lot. Okay, girl, let's go. Stand by. Ready?
This is the light rifle pop and flop, as it's called, the LRPF. What we have here are 14 pins, steel pins, to be knocked down by a rifle. Now, you can use pretty much any rifle. You can use a 223 or a 308 or almost anything in between. However, the pins are quite thick and quite heavy, and it takes a little bit more than a, well, even than a 22 Magnum or uh, sometimes a 223 to knock them down unless you get a direct hit. You start here with your weapon loaded, no more than 30 rounds. The weapon's held at port arms, and you're not allowed to use a sling at the start. You can sling after the uh, buzzer starts, but you can't sling until the buzzer starts. Start here. From here, you shoot all 14 targets. Now, if you look out there, you'll see some black pins. The black pins are just, shall we say, to confuse the enemy. You don't shoot the black pins. Uh, is there a penalty for shooting black pins? No. You, you, it'll be your own penalty, a time penalty. You can shoot them if you want to, but nobody really does. They're just out there, actually, because they're extra pins, and when we need them, we paint them white and paint a bad one black. Having shot the 14 pins, which is quite a feat, because it's very difficult, those far pins especially, you have to get center hits to make them good. Then you run over here with your, weapon, with your finger out of your trigger guard, and you place your weapon, your rifle, down on this table with the safety on, muzzle down range. You then pick up a hand grenade, another one of our practice grenades, like this, and you throw it at that, those two circles. If you get it inside the circle through the hoops there, you'll get 10 seconds off. If you hit the outside, the steel, you get five seconds off. After having thrown the grenade, you pick up your pistol, you shoot the two steel bowling pins out there about 30 feet, knock those down, and then you hit the stop plate, which stops the electronic timer. And that's the LRPF. This has also come a long way. In the, in the original days, we had you had to run out there and set up little bowling pins all over little stands. And it took about oh, a minute and a half or so. It was uh, another very strenuous uh, event. So we made it a little easier for some people who just don't like to huff and puff. And it has been more popular. This is the LRPF. How many times you come to Second Chance? This is my first time and I love it. I'm coming back next year, without a doubt. Great. Did you shoot well today? I didn't have too bad a day. Uh, not bad at all, really. But you came here for other things other than shooting, is that correct? Pardon me? You came here for things other than shooting? No, not at all. Just shooting? Not drinking beer and then throwing water balloons? And... No beer drinking, no anything else.
She says, come on, I've heard a lot of stories. It's just they're never going to happen. And she says, ah, oh, you should watch. Snaps his fingers once. My God, it goes on an inch. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you when, know when you would I mean, see where that gun is going to be sitting during the fall yeah. with duck geese and water up to here, <laughs> it's a wonderful night. Hello, everybody. Shootable gun. <laughs> Are we having a good time here at Second Chance, people? <laughs> you Fantastic. Oh, yes. Fantastic time. Fantastic. Beautiful. attack after a vicious rose. Really, just a natural ability. When you come from Chicago, it's a natural ability. That and spending many hours with the board, really. You would be believe it's the same way they section a heart. <laughs> oh, we're doing this on film. Jesus Christ, it's a matter of yeah, really, I'll tell you, I've seen them go through the liver and sit there and think it was roast. It looks the same. You can't really tell. You go home. You guys coming from, what's that, NPD? What is that? Niles. Niles. Niles what? Ohio. Niles, Ohio. Policeman? You come up here, this is strictly training, right? Serious business up here. Yeah. Right? No fun, anything like that. What do you have in your cups there? Huh? What is that, in your training? Milk. It's a cola. Uh, milk, oh. Milk. <laughs> How, Not good. What's your favorite? Beef. Favorite? Beef? <laughs> the cow. Beef. The cow, right? Yeah. And how are you guys shooting? Going in. We are. We are. That's it. We're, we're breaking guns and uh, generally not doing too good. But you enjoying the food? Oh, oh yeah. We're enjoying the shoot too. Yeah. Fun. What's the best thing about the shoot? The pin setters. Extra oh. <laughs> weapons. No. Timers ready. How long? How many years have you come to Second Chance? This is my third year. Mm -hmm. How do you like it? Oh, I like it. It's a lot of fun. You always look forward to seeing the people that you've seen in the years previous. And where do you where do you live now? I live in Omaha, Nebraska. And you came all the way up here for the shoot? Yeah, you can't hardly pass up getting paid vacation from where I work and coming and making some fun money here. What's the best thing about uh, working at the shoot? Just the people. I think it's. I really, I really look forward to seeing everybody that I've seen before you make a lot of good friends. It's just fun coming, talking to everybody. Uh, the, we're talking about the girls or the shooters? The shooters, of course. <laughs> Jerry, you're leading now. This is about the end of the shoot as far as the five pin goes. And uh, what's your score? I have a 19-3. 
19-3, and you seem to be in number one position. Do you think it's going to hold? Always can be someone come in. And... Well, it looks, pre looks pretty good at this stage. I think all the uh, top shooters have shot. Uh, what's your secret? Mostly just all it amounts to is just sight alignment and trigger control. Just watch your sights and go across the table. Shooters, right? How long have you been shooting, Jerry? I've been shooting a 45 in IPSC for two years. Two years? I started uh, two years this past April, so. Well, you've done pretty well for a guy who just started. A lot of people here have been shooting for 10, sometimes 15, 20 years and haven't done as well as you. I started shooting uh, handguns when I was 13 years old, and it was just all mostly blanking with 22s. And a couple years ago, I got it. I had a fellow come up and asked me about shooting combat. And uh, I went to a match and watched it, and I decided I have to try this. And uh, it's just going on from there. Well, you shoot a lot of other matches, I imagine. Mostly IPSC. I like some steel, and last year I came out, this was the first bowling pin shoot I was too. And it's a lot of fun. It's difficult. Would you say it's more difficult than the IPSC type stuff? Yeah, um, the pins are smaller. Uh, you can't hose them like you can the paper targets and get away with it. It's, uh, you have to shoot a little more precise. What kind of gun do you use? I have a government model. Um, Steve Nastoff built up for me. It's his new super comp design, and uh, it works real well. We take a look at it? Sure. <coughs> Just hold it up there, that's right. This is a Nastoff, uh, Nastoff compensator? Mm-hmm. He cuts about three quarters of an inch off the slide. It's got a little longer comp. Um, it has about a five and three eighth inch barrel. And uh, it's his newest design he's come out with. And I shot a lot of weapons. And I feel right now, at this point, this is probably about the best on the market. What type of ammo do you use? For this type of match, I'm using um, 200 grain spear hollow points, and I'm putting 6.3 of 231 behind it. 6.3? Right. It's about equivalent to a uh, major load for 45 in IPSC, about 875 feet per second. Well, when you go up to the uh, line there, now with your record of having come in, was it second last year? Mm-hmm. Um, are you nervous when you get up there? I was nervous. I felt the pressure. Um, it's hard to deal with sometimes, but I guess it just takes some matches. You have to shoot matches in order to overcome it a little bit. I don't think anybody can totally overcome it. Um, sometimes you can use it to shoot in favor of you, and sometimes it can get the best of you. Well, what do you do to prepare yourself mentally before you shoot? I picture each pin on the table. I picture my sight being on each pin and squeezing the trigger, and it's going straight off the back. Mm -hmm. I go to sleep thinking about that. When I wake up in the morning, it's I'm trying to drill it into my subconscious. Mm -hmm. And whenever you're under pressure, um, what helps me is I rely on that because when it comes up, when you pull the gun up to start shooting, I seem to be able to pull it out of the back of my mind and, and be able to go through with it. And uh, when you get up to the line, are you still thinking of those things? Yeah, I try to forget that there's anyone else around me. I just isolate myself, try to isolate myself in my own position. There's no one else there. And most of the time it works. Sometimes you know, I'm still trying to master it, same as the shooting. What's, what's the most important thing a new shooter should know about shooting? I would say starting out, um, practice bullseye shooting, sight alignment, and trigger control. That's the whole name of the game in a shoot. Um, no matter what you're doing, you have to get that drilled into you. And you just keep shooting more and more. Um, your speed will come. How old are you, Jerry? 25. Right, well, congratulations, Jerry. Looks like you won, or we hope you have, and uh, good luck. Thank you. OK, everybody back.
you guys do? Not too good for first year, but we're having a hell of a yeah, good time. That's right. Okay, down from Montreal. Yeah. Are uh, you guys policemen? No, no we're civilians. civilians. Can you shoot up there? Do we shoot up there? Yes. Yeah, we're but allowed. nothing like this. Not like this. Yeah. No, uh, it's a little more bit. restricted, but uh, as long as you don't have any. Uh, record or anything like that you get your permits there's no problem at all it's just it's gun registration which you don't have down here you know? and where are you on the board there near the bottom easy to, fi easy to find Six, seven. page eight of nine pages <laughs> how about you well, around there too really a couple above them we shoot close but do you feel disappointed no say again you feel disappointed no no I mean, well, we came here with great, great ideas, but a week or two before we got here, we got some real life pins to practice on. And then the, uh, we found out that we weren't going to do what we thought we were going to do. And of course, when we got here, we got the shakes and everything. But it's fun. I'm going to bring back my family next year. Yeah, I'm going to come back again and uh, bring more, bring my girlfriend, anybody I can who wants to go. Well, what would you like to say to Richard Davis about this whole affair? What would you like to tell Richard Davis about this whole affair? It's fantastic. Thanks a million. I'll be back. I'm putting suntan lotion on here. Uh, it's not really that hot or sunny today, but the uh, thing is, I just love to touch myself. <laughs> you should have the upper sun start with your team. But the girls are going to put a bit more at times. Weapons. Take you off. Timers ready. Guns on the rail. Shooters ready. Yes. That's pretty well. Thank you. Have you practiced a lot? No, little. How long have you been shooting? Oh, about a year and a half, maybe two. Well, that's pretty good for a year and a half or two. Can we ask how old you are? Pretty old. <laughs> you just decided to start shooting. Well, my husband was shooting some PPC and they had some uh, powder puff matches in California. It was kind of fun. What else do you shoot now? Nothing else. Just bowling pins? Just for Dave, yeah. How many years have you come here? This is our second. How do you like it? Just fine. Last year it looked like fun, so this year Dave gave me a birthday present, unbeknownst to me, of a sign up. So, oh, really? <laughs> no choice, right? Well, you're doing wonderfully. Oh, thanks. <laughs> both times. You did fine. Guns out of the rail. Shooters ready. Oh. I was standing next to Michael J. You were standing me standing next to Michael J. I like to stand next to Michael J because I look so stupid. <laughs> Right. See, come nuclear war, real famine, all you skinny people are going to be the first ones to go. Me and Jay are going to rule the world. <laughs> I start on the left and go across. I don't look back. I just shoot hey, one shot at each pin. If I miss one, she'll come across the other way and... Dang. Pick it up. I start on the right and go towards the center and just keep heading across. And anything that's left, Okay, good times here in the high end. Seven through ten, all look pretty good. Good, sweet. Do that again. Okay, reload on two, five, and eleven. Okay. I think they're closing registration on that right now if they haven't already. Yeah. All set there, 2, 5, and 11. Timers ready. Guns on the rail. Shooters ready. We're shooting high. Okay, slide on over to 3, 6, and 12. This 
time. Okay, 3, 6, 12, stuff them on in. 3, 6, and 12, ready to go. Timers ready. Guns on the rail. Shooters ready. Okay, slides back, slides oh, well. back, clear them out. Make sure I'll clear it out, slides back, summer's open. We try. And the girls go forward and set them up. My God, she says, I can't believe this. This of all my years of doing this, I've just this is fantastic. And I, I guess we can do it. Let's go to it. What, what, are, you, what are you guys doing over here? <laughs> Talk to the main well, guy. We're just waiting on Richard here to give him a little bath when we get a chance. It's time to get even with Richard. It's time, it's time, yeah. His bird bombs, his fireworks, and his wisecracks. Now it's our turn. Well, what is it you're going to do to him? We're going to water bomb him. <laughs> we'll get a signal. And what is that piece of artillery you got there? <laughs> it's an Incruiser balloon launcher. <laughs> That's guaranteed to go. <laughs> <laughs> that wire in front is not give me any problems. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. You know, I think he's just got a small gauge and he's pointing it right at him. Ah! Oh, you son of a bitch. Bruce MacArthur, what have you got here? Uh, this is a replica of an 1840 mountain howitzer. They were very popular during the Indian Wars. Uh, the bore size is a little smaller, it's three inch. The original were four and five eighths. Sure. This is zinc, it weighs three and three quarter pounds. Uh, when they're cast in lead, they weigh six and a quarter pounds. Got another one of those? Fire. Got two more of these? Right there. Right there in the box. Who's to say this is a replica box? Yeah, it's a replica. It's one I made. You made this camera? Yes. <laughs> About 18 years ago. Long box. And uh, it has a range of 1,450 yards. Hey, nice. What's it for propellant? Black powder, 1FG, uh, half a pound. Half a pound of powder? Yes. Here's the powder charge right here. And how accurate is it? Well, once the gun's laid in at this range, a person should be able to fire about a four-foot group. <laughs> a four-foot group at 1,600 yards? No, this is 450 yards. Yeah. What else, have we, what else have we got here? Well, we have the Manville over here, which is originally developed as a tear gas gun. And uh, it, they were made in Pontiac, Michigan, back in the uh, late 20s. Uh, this is my 50 caliber rifle that I built about four years ago. Uh, this is an M2 Browning, heavy barrel. It's John. Who's uh, Browning? This is Richard Davis's Browning. Here. I think uh, Richard wants to show us something. Juggling cannonballs, ladies and gentlemen, a first. All right. Okay, this is a Dogs of War gun called the Manville 25 which they declassify, is now currently classified from a, a, a weapon to a non-weapon, because uh, there hasn't been any ammo made for it since the 1930s. However, it's called a 25 millimeter gun, but the 26.5 millimeter flare cartridges fit in here real nice. And we'll, we'll fire a couple of these here. Now here they come. Uh oh, there goes one. This is an MG34. It's 8 millimeter Mauser. It's a World War II German machine gun known as Hitler's saw. Very high cyclic rate on it. This is a 1918 A2 Browning. The selective fire on it was slow and fast. The 1918s had semi on full auto. It's 3006. Okay, over here. This is M60 machine gun, standard U.S. issue, 308. Okay. We'll take a look at the uh, 50 caliber. Rich, you want to give a introduction to your 50 caliber? Huh? Oh. Hello there. I'm John Moses Browning. I invented. Oh no! I can't lie. I can't carry this faucet on anymore. I'm really just all I do is second chance body armor. Uh, this is a Browning machine gun. Uh, I give a long story about it, but. Uh, 
middle of World War I, John Browning, just before World War I, rather, John Browning went to the Army and says, hey, look at Mr. Army, I've got this really neat gun. You just keep pulling the trigger, and these 30 caliber bullets keep coming through, and just keep shooting all day long. And Army says, ah, oh, get out of here, Browning, you jerk, we don't need that. World War I comes along. Army comes around, uh, Mr. Browning, bought that really neat gun you had, machine gun you called it. Uh, we like to buy a lot. All you got, please, right away. <laughs> so <laughs> then uh, John Browning comes to the U.S. Army and says, hey, remember me? I'm the guy that made this 30 caliber gun that you really like so much. I got an idea for a 50 caliber gun, half inch bullet. It's really neat and it'll go through like real heavy sandbags. And if you should happen to find a piece of steel an inch thick on your battlefield, it'll go through that. And the army says, ah, get out of here, browning asshole. We don't need anything like that. And then... That's exactly what they said, isn't it? That's what they said. <laughs> anyway, uh, then, of course, the thing called the tank came along, and there's, they got inch-thick steel plates and a 30 caliber, even 30 out 6 armor piercing wouldn't quite make it through an inch-thick plate, inch plate of steel. And the army says, gee, if we only had something, we'd go crashing right through inch-thick plate of steel. Oh, yeah, remember Browning had that idea? So they give him the go-ahead and the money to make the Browning machine gun, and... He actually got the first gun going the day after World War I ended. And then they made a few, and they said, okay, we don't need these anymore. And then, of course, World War II came along, and it made them by the thousands. And all around the planet here, there's big half-inch holes going real deep and all kinds of things. World War II ended. So he says, okay, Brownie, cut out these crappy guns. We don't need these 50-caliber guns anymore. And then, of course, Korean War came along. He says, let's start making these Brownings again. You know, they're really neat. They tried making substitutions for them. An M85 machine gun didn't work. Korean War's over with this. Well, that's it. Goddamn Browning. Let's get rid of it. You know, don't need any more. Vietnam comes along. <laughs> uh, let's start making Brownings again, uh, you know. And truly, probably, this gun will be in service 100 years, in active service 100 years after it's first invented, because it's a very nice practical gun. Uh, puts a half inch hole very deep, and uh, you get a variety of ammunition, which. Right now, our first ones we're going to spot in now is a belt of uh, mostly pure tracer. First that. And after that, we've got some more tracer. Then we get into what we call fruit salad here. We've so got uh, incendiary rounds. And then a real bright tracer round with these blue tips are an, a pure incendiary round, which kick up a lot of sparks and things. So we're going to load this sucker up, I guess. What are we going to do what do you shoot with the Browning 50 caliber? Any damn Just about anything you want to. <laughs> it's got a tough linking these by hands. It's important to get the bullet all the way in. I'm not getting this one in. Hit it with a hammer. Yeah, hit it with a hammer, right? That's how the Indians used to do it, right by hand. Yeah. My hands used to link the 50 calibers by hand. My wife makes me. If you're firing this, the, the, the link with two sides, with two loops, is the one that goes into the gun first. What, what are we doing here? Oh, we're going to shoot down there. <laughs> Anything that moves. Okay, guys, move back. We're going to fire down in there. <laughs> a brave guy staying right in front of a cannon there. Yeah, hell of a These guys are like concussion prone. Move over. <laughs> That's why they respected cannon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, might be a good idea, Mike. Uh, Bruce, a little high. Let's slide back and get it. Uh, the hell with all that armor. With that stuff, yeah, yeah, roll out there. Right, yeah. right. Well, yeah. right. Well, right. Well, Who's a better wad? Uh, I think we have another cow for tomorrow. Right on your way, Mike. Actually, I've got a Gore-Tex shirt you can rip up. It's burning full blast. Fire Fire truck. We got, we got a little fire truck just in case things get crazy. And I thought my 50 caliber was a pain in the ass. <laughs> nice fit. Jesus. <laughs> 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 Hey, Gary? Yeah. Turn me off a piece of that clock. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Here, you want a hanky? Catch the loot. Are you guys going to fire from these now? We're going to move up once the cannon's done. As soon as the cannon's done, he's going to fire. Find it. You'll be able to aim this one better. I'll be able to aim this one better. <laughs> How high was I? Uh, well, we're just below the crest of the hill. Doesn't it look like Yosemite Sam? Look at that wonderful weapon. That's the next time. I'm a Hessian when he ain't got no aggression. Oh, wait! Too late now. Ears! There's Johnny. I got him. Oh, All right. Good, Good job. Good job. See that? It skipped right into it. Yeah. Good. Oh, Good. 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 What'd you think of that? I want to shoot it. <laughs> Which one, the cannon? All of them. Just let me shoot it. Just let me at it. <laughs> Are you a gun kind of girl? Oh, yeah. Definitely. I was at 50 caliber all day today. I was having a ball. What do you own of your own? Everything. H&Ks, 223s, Mini 14s, 45s. Everything you can think of. Everything except the 50 caliber. They won't let me take it to the range. Works out just fine, but it's gunpowder, cologne, you know, that sort of thing, you know. And what kind of work do you do? I don't, I just do this.
I have a small but tasteless fireworks display. Uh, these are some uh, various commercial Class B fireworks. Class C is the common firecrackers you buy in the store, Tennessee or whatever. Class A is dynamite. This is Class B. This is commercial fireworks. This, for example, is a four-inch diameter flash salute. It just goes up and goes bang. Some of the things you can do wrong is to, for example, put this thing upside down. You think it would go in like this. It doesn't. It goes in like this. The fuse runs along the side here, catches the propellant. Only the, about the bottom quarter inch is actually propellant. The rest is all explosive warhead. So we'll drop a four inch down here. Another thing you do wrong, and I've already checked for this, is to have water in the bottom of your tubes. This can degrade your repellent and uh, cause the shell to not reach its full height and explode with the sparks showering all over the ground. Uh, yet another thing you can do wrong is to put, for example, a four inch shell like this. This is a four brake shell. If you drop this down a five inch tube, the propellant gas, which is down here in the gunpowder, would then only propel the shell a short distance out of the tube. So instead of getting a swoosh boom effect, you'd get whoop, 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 bam. And sparks would come back all over the pit area and all over yourself and probably light off all your other fireworks and it'd be a really great show for everybody except you. So we're gonna slide this guy right down here nice and snugly down a four inch tube. And this is a Japanese made five inch shell. These other shells are made in America. Japanese make good shells, except they, they cheap out in the fuses, which is kind of is irritating to me. This is a five inch diameter mum. We're gonna slide this down here. The darn fuse doesn't reach <laughs> all the way down. So I'm gonna have to pull it, I'm gonna have to light this thing and then drop it. I normally have a blowtorch to light this stuff with, but we're just gonna use matches tonight because I don't have my blowtorch. And I guess we'll light one, okay? set. This is a uh, three inch diameter shells. This, this will break twice and explode. Uh, same thing here and there. This will appear just flash salute. This will just go up and go bang. In fact, I'm going to maneuver these around a little bit here. We we'll have the pretty break stars and the bangs. After I do a show around here, I do like four different cities around here for the fun of it. Nonprofit corporation that does this. The men come to me afterwards and say, hey, a good show, but let's have some more of those big thundering bangs. And the women come up to me, including my beautiful wife, and say, uh, gee, can't you have more pretty ones and less of the loud ones? So it's always a quandary. I always just hold my head out and say, OK, we'll have more of both. Just give me the money. <laughs> this is a five inch uh, shell here, American made. This is a nice, uh, pretty one. It's uh, blue and silver. The rest of these are. Uh, a mixture of uh, pretty rake ones and loud ones. I must report something, ladies and gentlemen. Everything a second chance is not just going along hunky-dory. We do have some problems. There have been incidents. One of those incidents happened repeatedly to Mr. Gary Morgan, who is our key grip for this production. Mr. Morgan, let's describe what's happening to you while you stayed in a, a little rustic cabin by the, by the lake. I was attacked. Tell us about and, it. And, more, and worse than that, my roommate, hel helpless in his room, was attacked by an unnamed person. What, what sort of attack was this today? I'm not really sure. Well, give us some of the uh, idea of what, 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 what clues do you have as to the nature of this attack? They seem to be exchanging body fluids. <laughs> I, I imagine this happens in the wee hours of the evening. Right? Yes, yes. And you, uh, you bar the door and hide under the bed. Yes, right? I, I'm very careful about uh, letting that attacker <laughs> Near me. But your roommate is not as lucky or as prudent. <laughs> no, no. And what, hap what what fate befalls him each night? Um, the same fate. <laughs> and what noises do you hear emanating from that room next to yours? What appear to be screams for help. <laughs> Have you ever responded? Yeah. No. 
<laughs> a screen for a screen for help could be a lot of different ways. Yes. Now, yes. Give me an example. What type of screen might it be? Oh God! Oh God! <laughs> they they well, I heard that scream. Might that not be a prayer? They were crying to their gods for help, mm -hmm. as I interpret it. I also hear there were sort of grunting noises. <laughs> Is this true? There, there was some type of struggle. <laughs> now, do you think they were maybe doing aerobic exercises? It, it might have been some form of aerobics. And now I heard there was one clue in the evening. Yeah. Is that correct? There was, there was an article of clothing left behind by the attacker. And what was that article of clothing? A straw hat with a black band. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> a straw hat with a black band. Be on the lookout for a straw hat with a black band. You could be next. She says, wait a minute, though. One more thing. I don't want to you know, get injured here myself. Uh, how do you make it go down? She's, he says, not the very. I've got it trained again to make it go down. Every time I'm going like this on my chest, it is going down an inch. Is that what you want to hear? Yeah. Good. This is a good team. Okay. Normally we don't have a bad match. Hose him off! Hose him off! Stand by. Just what? Do push I just your thumbs down. Just, just push them down. It won't hurt you. I know, but is it going to go home? Right. Those? No, it'll it stay right break where it is. All those, gonna, all those bullets yeah, As long as you hold your thumbs down. As long yeah. as you keep your thumbs down, it'll shoot. Can I aim it? Yep. Okay. Ready? Yep. Go ahead. <laughs> is that right? I'm keep going. going. Six. I got a shrunken inch. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. She says, that is fantastic. That is fantastic. I've never seen anything like that in my life. Timers ready. Guns on the rail. Shooters ready. Okay, this will be your third table. Timers ready. Guns on the rail. Shooters ready. Denny, you shot a 3-8. Good. That's pretty, pretty good. How'd you do it? How? Ran nine tables and one finally went together. Well, what's the secret of shooting fast like that? About seven years. That's the seventh year up here. 
subject matter for like putting it together. Is the best you've done? No, well, no, I'm just sitting fifth on the main pen right now and fifth last year, third year before. Where does that place you now on the main pen? <sighs> Should be second or third depending on a tiebreaker. That's great. What advice would you give to new shooters about shooting fast like that on a 9-pin? I mean, it's hard to give advice on the 9-pin because it's it's just a matter of shooting it as many times as it takes to, to get one to come together. You can't be consistent on that like you can on the others. So listen to this. Sunday morning, about three months later, the phone rings. It's Broads in Youngstown. Yeah. <laughs> This is Steve ain't here. <laughs> <laughs> Send your copy to Nastoff's Custom Gun, Kingstown, Ohio. <laughs> Okay, grasp your weapons. <laughs> Timers ready. Guns on the rail. Shooters ready. Show it to us. <laughs> Guns on rail. Shooters ready. Close your legs, for God's sake. Yeah. <laughs> this, 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 this is so remarkable. This is Dave, this is Dave Wheeler. Are you being interviewed? Right, you're being interviewed, Dave. This is Dave Wheeler, comes to our match all the time. And I saw him with this beautiful girl here at the match. I says, oh, Dave, this this your uh, girlfriend? He says, well, no. I said, oh, it's your wife. Oh, excuse me, it's your wife. He says, no. And I said, well, well, she came to the match with you, right? She says, yeah. And what are you? What's your relationship with Dave Wheeler? His ex-wife. You're his ex-wife. <laughs> two years in a row. Two years in a row. And, and two years in a row you've been here. <laughs> now, at first this floored me. Then one simple fact hit me. You're both from California, right? Right. Oh. <laughs> that explains it all. Were they sufficiently humiliated? Guns on rail. Shooters ready. That was six, wasn't it? Yeah. You got a 3.5 as fast as running. I was. We just couldn't click. I don't know. Nice. One of us could leave your, on one, I guess. What's your fastest time in the two-man so far here? 3.4. Three, 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 four. Four. So the 3.5 is nothing to you. No. We're looking no. for a two. <laughs> Richard, if you can use an eight-inch revolver in a four-inch event, if it only can fire four hey, rounds before you load it. Okay. Okay, Tyus says we're gonna take shooters now, and for tomorrow, for, for tomorrow we're gonna take uh, compression gear. Hey, Gary, is it, is it okay if I uh, as you ask, ask a common question? Is it okay if I repeat the question for everybody? It's okay? Well, the answer is uh, 
no, uh, just because you've had one homosexual experience does not mean that's necessarily what you have to be. Just try to forget about it and uh, lead a normal life. Pardon? Which pose are which? Okay. Your red silver is armor piercing incendiary tracer. Your straight blue tip is straight incendiary, and your silver tip is armor piercing incendiary. No ball? No ball. Okay. It's all incendiary. Do it. Mrs. Davis, the mother of the famous Richard Davis, and Mrs. Pat Davis, the sister of the famous Richard Davis. I made 5,000 cookies for the show this year. 5,000 cookies? What, what types of cookies? Mostly chocolate chip, also icebox, oatmeal, uh, applesauce spice, and peanut butter. And what's the most popular? Oh, definitely chocolate chip. Chocolate chip? With nuts. 5,000 cookies? 5,000 cookies. Have you cookies. given them all out now? No, thing? we give out five, put out 500 a day, and Good they go. God. Real fast. Are people hoarding them, you think? No, they're eating. <laughs> We've got lots of uh, bullet mugs, souvenir but bullet these are mugs. These actual bulletproof mugs, aren't they? <laughs> well, <laughs> they're see, bullets that have been shot at the shoe. You can see the bullets stuck here on the side of the mug. Uh-huh. Are these popular items? They don't go right. Yes, very popular. And how much does that sell for? Six dollars. Six dollars. How much do you pay for it? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think of Richard Davis, your son, and your, your brother creating all this nonsense? Well, we think he's marvelous, naturally. We, at the beginning, 11 years ago, we didn't think this thing even had a chance of going. But all of a sudden, it just, every year it grew and grew and grew. And why has he been so successful? Because he's a genius. And well, where does he get that from? From me. It's coming out with a new a combination of guns, a combination of right guard and a break rate for people who carry their guns and shoulder holsters. <laughs> Uh, is, this is Richard's party, and Richard Davis from Second Chance puts on one heck of a party, as you can see. Okay, in case you haven't been here before, how this works, uh, we have special prizes for 144th place. We have a 144, that's really gross. We have a 44 black powder, which you don't need a license for, just to give that to you. And for 91st place, got an 1891. For 223rd place, is a 1914 in caliber 223. And for 357th place, we got a Ruger, 357. And if my wife and her crew ever get over here, we'll start giving them out. We also have some, some secret prizes in Among the Lesser Stuff. I won't say what it is, but I will be making offers here for various lesser prizes. Okay, and first place, number one, the song, the story behind the first place. The first place winner this year, with entry number 13, Jerry C. Barnhart. Right. Yay! Yeah. After his watch right now, here's the time. And his best time was 3.3. His worst time was 8.1. I, I, I told for friends to go up and uh, tell Jerry to, that, uh, hey, Rich, change the rules so you can't throw out your worst time. He goes, ah! <laughs> his total time for the best is for five five tables. His best five tables. A total time of 19.3. Come on, Jerry. Come here, yeah, Jerry. Another thing, all you guys who win prizes, don't shake hands too hard. My wrist it really is ripped. Ten is a rip in my wrist, and it really hurts. San Francisco style. Jerry next uh, will have his, his name on. He gets to hold of the Magnum Trophy here for a year. 19.3, that's averaging less than four seconds per run. It's pretty not fast. A lot of other issues that will say the winners have a three second time or something, but here we have times are slightly longer. It's much tougher to get a better time second chance. Yes, it does. He gets the golden belt buckle. Makes you can rule hard for America. He gets the golden belt buckle from, uh, I think, P&D, isn't it? Sure. And more to what we got 18 stages, he's a couple of speed loaders, so you can actually go. 
Can we go longer than the bar some night? <laughs> And now we drop all the way down to uh, oh, about 10 places. Our first OSS shooter. Actually, finished last place. Robert Yvarge. Robert Yvarge. His best time was four flat. His worst time was six four. Very consistent. Do I tell some that's to your board? Or no. Go up here and consistently pick out a price. Anything you want. I've got two uh, healthy sons there, so hopefully they'll uh, be able to carry on. And I hope it isn't something that's just, you know, trampled in the dust of history and forgotten. Because what we've got up here is, you know, something really special and good. And it uh, shows shooting off to be a, a sport as well as a defensive thing. Uh, I always hope it can go on for uh, ever and ever, for tens of years into the next century. She says, well, let's, let's get it on. So he goes, sure, one, two. He says, one more thing, you mind? Got a little kinky thing here? You mind I play a little Jewish music while we do it? She says, well, sure, I don't mind. He says, yeah, I got a little cassette right here. We'll play a little Jew Jewish music while we do it. She says, sure, a lot of kinkier stuff than that. <laughs> no problem at all. Three, 
four, five, six, seven. Hits the cassette, gets on a girl, the music comes on. If I were a rich man, could I, 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 I